Okay, here we go, some fruit. I'm going to do fruit. Um, okay, I know it's out of my comfort zone and probably out of your comfort zones as well. Um, we're just used to doing landscapes all the time, aren't we? So I thought it would be nice just to try something different. Um, let's just try it and see what happens. I'm no expert at painting still life like this, but I think it's nice to try and just push yourself a little bit every now and again. Wouldn't you agree? So I have a little photograph here of some, just some little apples and a pear. Now I might bring the pear maybe slightly more green. I'll see as we go. But yeah, it's just a nice simple composition. Some fruit in the middle and perhaps some nice reflections on the table. Something simple like that. Um, so it's just basically kind of focusing on drawing and getting the curvature of uh, objects and making it look like it's curved, okay? And putting some highlights in the shadows. So let's have a bit of fun with this. So I'm going to start sketching. And when I sketch like this, I'm basically just going to draw circles. So um, I'm going to start around here, look. So I'm going to draw an apple here. Like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to draw another one slightly behind it here. Let's go slightly higher with this one. And it almost disappears down here into the shadow, doesn't it? And I'm going to do a pair um, around here. And the pair is kind of... I'm, I'm, I'm not being perfect now with these shapes at all. I'm just doing a very kind of rough impression. That is complete, that's all I'm doing. Um, and it kind of comes in like that. And then it sort of comes out and it turns, doesn't it? Now it comes down here like this as well. Very slightly. And it turns. And that will do fine, I think. I'm it's a bit rounder here, look. A pear and another apple on this side. And this is a nice big round apple in there. So that's that's the basic drawing done. We can make them slightly bigger as we go, if we wish. Um, okay, now I'm just going to put a hint of the centerpiece there. And I'm going to put a hint of one there. And on this one, it's a little bit further down, isn't it? Like that. That's it. Okay, colours. Let me tell you what colours I have. Titanium white, Naples yellow. I have some, uh, that's burnt umber. I have some cadmium yellow pale, some cadmium red, some crimson, um, not all crimson. Regular crimson will do fine, Elizabeth crimson. Um, I have some phthalo blue for some rich shadows. Burnt sienna, just a little bit of burnt sienna. And black. Okay, nice colourful palette today. Lots of colours. So we're going to get a lot busy with mixing today. Now I'm going to take my large stubby brush. It's a number 16 flat synthetic brush. Um, oh, by the way, what we're working on today is MDF, okay? Just regular tin MDF, look. A 6mm, it's just for the, this tutorial. It's, it's normally, I would normally use a half inch, um, slightly thicker MDF. But this is fine, it's a, bit, a piece I had left over. So I thought, yeah, perfect for tutorials, let's, let's do it. So 6mm MDF, um, I gave it two coats of white primer, all right? And I gave it a very light sand, and that's it. So lovely smooth brush strokes today. And it's perfect as well for landscapes, it's very good for landscapes. So let's try this. I'm going to put a very dark, rowdy black background in here, okay? So I'm going to just dampen my brush. Let me just get some tissue here now first, I do apologise. And I also apologise for the um, terrible quality in the windmill tutorial. It turned out very, very bad, didn't it? And I hope this one turns out a bit better. Um, I have the camera set to manual adjustment, so it should not change by itself. It should stay as it is, exactly as it is. Well, fingers crossed anyhow. So, I'm going to dampen my brush in some turpentine. Just turpentine, nothing else, okay? No linseed oil, nothing like that. I'm going to dampen my brush, and then just 
Dab it try. And let's take some burnt umber. Lots and lots and lots of thick burnt umber, look. And I want this now nice and creamy, but not too wet. Because if it's too wet, you will see all the brush strokes. So I want to build up a thick, a thick layer of the background here, all right? I hope you follow that. So I'm putting on lots of burnt umber, and I'm putting in a touch of black, just a touch, look. Now, this will be quite transparent because burnt umber is quite a transparent colour um, when it's tinned out. So you can see what I mean there, look. It's very transparent, so you can see right through to what's underneath. And in order to thicken that up, I might, um, let me see now, I might just use some black first. Okay, and I'm not allowing my brush to get too wet. So it's thickening up now slightly, and let's take a touch of red. And that too will give us a kind of a dark blacky brown. So let's try that. Now I will um, add to this as I'm, as I'm going to make it slightly thicker. So for example, it is quite wet, so I'll just go into some paint on its own, nothing else, just paint. And I'm going to start thickening this all up. So I do want a nice and dark behind the fruit to give it a nice um, warm kind of dark feeling and create a bit of atmosphere. So then we can create a nice strong light point in the painting. So let's get some more brown. And I'm just roughly going in around the fruit here. Okay, very loosely. Now you could in fact do this um, and leave it dry and then go over it again, give it a second coat. But I kind of love painting wet into wet like this. It's just um, it's just the way that I've painted it all the time. And um, you know, I'm kind of used to it. But if you're not used to doing this, you can just paint the background, let it dry and then come back and paint this over that colour again. Or indeed, you could in fact even just paint the whole board or canvas one colour. So you could tint your canvas in that sense. And that would be a good idea also. So there's many ways of doing it. But I'd like to show you what I'm doing from scratch. I don't like to uh, kind of skip ahead and uh, start half a through painting, so to speak. I'd like to show you what I'm doing up front and without any editing or any any that kind of stuff this is how I paint in real time so let me just get some more burnt umber I'm running out of that and I will make the fruit slightly bigger I think so we can kind of cut into that dark colour then slightly wouldn't you agree now some burnt umber and some black and let's get a nice dark colour so you see what's happening now is this colour, all this paint here now is starting to kind of soak gently into the MDF board very, only just very gently so my next brush stroke on top of that is sitting a bit better you see look it's sitting much better because I gave it time to kind of stick and grab the board and it's kind of very very slightly drying in on this MDF board and that's why I only gave it two coats of primer because I, I know the board is quite dry and it takes in a lot of moisture so I wanted this to kind of dry in a little quicker than usual but if I didn't want that you could just give it maybe three coats of primer and it would be fine it would stay much wetter for much longer. Understand? So I kind of planned this ahead. Just a little. Because I just love this MDF board the way it gives you a lovely smooth effect. And you can really kind of judge your drying time with it. I find with canvas it's very difficult to know exactly when something is going to be dry enough to work your second coat on top very very difficult with canvas um, but with MDF board after a while you kind of get used to how it feels 
and you know by painting on it then if it's going to be drying quickly or drying slowly now so there we go building it up nice and rich you see now I'm going to start adding lots little bits of red just here and there just to give it that nice warm feeling now I will be painting over all of this again at the bottom because this is actually they're kind of sitting on a table so I will paint over all of that again later but I'm just focusing right now on getting the lovely rich dark background into the painting and what I'll do now while this is slightly wet up here I'm going to just take my blender brush or um, one of your wife's makeup brushes or your own makeup brush for that matter and let's just soften some of these brush strokes out just a little and I want this nice and dark so I might go over it again later I'll see so I'm barely touching the board now with this very soft I'll just use a regular mop brush that you have or your soft blending brush whichever you prefer and if you would like to get a hold of some of these brushes just let me know send me an email I'm waiting on a big delivery to come in so I will have some in stock very very soon so in the meantime you could just let me let me know if you're interested and I can send them to you now that'll do for now okay I'm not wetting this this blender brush when I when I finish okay um, in each painting I do I don't wet this with turpentine this is completely dry sometimes what I might do is dampen this with a little turpentine and then rub the paint off like so but in general I just give it a good rub on dry tissue and that takes most of the paint out of the hair you see really get down in there and then it stays nice and soft again for our next painting all right so let me see let me see let me see I'm going to darken the top of the snow just again just very slightly so I'm just dampening the very tip of my brush and my turpentine and giving a good dry look and then I'm picking up lots of black and some red lots of that crimson so now we're getting very dark aren't we So paint that in nice and quickly right across there, flick it right in. And in fact what I might do, I might create a little purple as well. So let's take some Taylor Blue and some of that crimson. And let's take a hint of white. Now we have a nice kind of a purpley plummy colour there, don't we? Look. And that's adding just a slight hint of shadow up there in the background. And a bit here. See, we're having a bit of fun with this now. And I think we'll just leave it at that. Well, I'll focus on all of this later, okay? Let's just concentrate on the fruit. What I might do there is I might just let this dry very briefly, just for a couple of minutes, maybe five or ten minutes. So I can get some nice um, strong outlines on the fruit. Alright, and it won't mix too much. It will still be a little wet, but it won't be soaking wet. Do you understand? So it don't go anywhere. Okay, so it's dried in very, very slightly. Only very slightly, in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I'm going to now just start on the apples. Okay? Let's have a look at brushes. Now I'm going to use a flat brush, so I'm thinking something like that. So that kind of a flat brush is nice, we get some nice little brush strokes with that. Um, I won't use something too big because I want to get some nice little textures. And I'll use that. So these two nice little brushes now should give us a lot of detail and a little pointy brush 
So that's it. I think that's probably all we need, really. So two flat brushes, number number six. Okay. So we can maybe use one for lights and one for darks. How about that? So here we go. Okay, let's take a flat brush and I'm going to start just filling in the red. So I'm going to do a medium kind of a shade. Now they will work darks and lights and a couple of greens onto that. So um, I will dampen it very slightly. Only just very slightly. Okay. It's really pretty much 90% dry but that tiny tiny bit of turpentine in it will be enough just to sort of break the paint okay so let's try now it's not a rich cadmium red it's more of a whiny kind of a red isn't it so let's try some cadmium red and let's take some of this crimson red and let me just have a look now I think I might try a touch of blue in this just a touch and let's just try that we can mess around with different colors um, look I'll do this one here first okay and you can see it's quite transparent isn't it but I will thicken it up as I go now I'm taking some cadmium red here let's try the touch of burnt umber in that and very wide apple here so I'm just going to fill that in with that colour there and let's get some more cadmium red we have to pick a light source don't we so which direction is the light going to come from I'm thinking and the photograph is kind of coming from this side here so we could go with that it's kind of coming from slightly the left hand almost in the centre so I think we go with that so let's just kind of straighten it back here slightly and then it curves around again so just fill all this in now with your red a nice dark red and this is a nice kind of study now if you want to learn about shadows and highlights and shapes okay now I'm going to just, um, I'm going to take some burnt cyana, cyana and mix it with some cadmium red and this will give a lovely warm orangey kind of a red. And I'm going to put that down here. And I hope this is showing out now okay on camera. I hope you can see these colours nice and crisp. Um, I'm going to take a touch of a yellow. I'm not cleaning my brush touch of yellow into that mix and let's add a touch of yellow here and there so I'm warming the apple now as I go you see I'm just making it ever so slightly warmer okay that's okay for a base and notice when I'm painting this right I'm following the direction of the curve so I'm going around like this Okay, and then as I get to the centre, it's becoming more straight, you see? And then when it gets to the opposite side, it turns the other way. And that's kind of creating the shape of this apple, you see? Well, I'm going to just put some darker colour over there. So perhaps a little dark reddy blue, kind of a mauve. Let's take some tailo blue and let's take some cadmium red. And even some crimson. We have a very, very nice rich shadow in here, so I'm going to put this in the shadow. And I know now it's almost disappearing into the background, but I will add a few highlights to it later. So you can see now I'm creating the curve, you see? I've started creating that curve. And, hmm, let me see. Right, I'll take my other brush and I'm going to start adding some brights to this. So there's a little hint of green in, in there, isn't there? So I'm going to take some maple yellow with some cadmium yellow, a little white, and I might take a touch of that blue, just a touch. And 
and I'm just going to add a touch of that in. Yeah, and there, look. See, and I'm going to kind of soften it in then to the apple. And notice how I'm going in that curve again, you see? Little flicks. I'm not doing big brush strokes, I'm doing just little flicks at a time. And let's get another little bit more yellow onto that. Okay. So I'm cleaning my, tissue, my brush on the tissue again. And what I'm going to do now is start adding some lights. So, in fact, there's one thing I wanted to do there. Look, there's a little dark just along the top here where the tip of the apple goes in. So I'm just going to pull it around with a little flick. Okay. And then the opposite way here. And I'm pulling it very gently downwards, you see? And you can already start to see where the apple that goes in on top. Do you understand? Now, it, at the back of that, up on top, I want to get a little hint of light up there. A very, very slight hint of light. And I might actually just take my pointy brush. little pointy brush, and I'm going to mix. Um, I'm going to take a little white, mix it into this kind of mauve colour that we just used. And we have a light mauve then. So... You would think because it's a red apple that it would be bright red or light pink or something. And you can do that, but I find using a mauve with a red really complements the colours. So on the back here, see, I'm just going to put a hint of that up at the back. And I'm going to do the same at the front here, where there's a little light point. So I'm going to just suggest a little light hitting the apple here and there with this colour ok, does that make sense? so it's starting to come to life now you can see it very slowly now I'm going to take some white and I'm going to take um, let me see now, perhaps a hint of Naples yellow just a hint I'm going to use that very bright colour then, just for the bright highlight just there in the centre, okay? Now all I'm doing is I'm doing tiny, tiny flicks with the brush. Tiny, and it's just imitating the skin on the apple, okay? It looks just very tiny flicks. I'll bring it over this way slightly. And then I'm going to do the same up on this top corner here. Very gently, look. And soften it gently down. So now, you can see the apple is beginning to form in front of us. I want to get a cool shadow. Remember I said I want to get a cool shadow down there. I want to take some tail of blue. A little bit of dark yellow blue. I'm just going to add a little shadow to that. Okay. And what happens is the blue is mixing with the red on the, on the board. And so it's creating nice pinky tones as well. So how's that? One apple. So it's pretty much the very, very same now for every other apple. Now I might soften the centre just ever so slightly with my soft brush, okay? very gently just here and there look okay and even some of that yellow as well and again I'm following the apple the shape of that apple now there we have one apple and one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some burnt umber and just here and there suggest some of the little creases that come out of the top of the apple there, you see? There. And I would leave it at that then, for now. Okay, just leave it. 
and we can come back to it. So that's one apple, pretty much 90% finished. Shall we do another? Let's try another. This is fun, isn't it? Let's try another. Okay, cadmium red into that dark colour. And this is more pinky, this one, more whiny. So more of this crimson colour. And let's go in here. So right up here, with a nice big apple. So crimson and a little burnt umber. That's pretty much the mix for this colour here. And so you see, I'm using this light here then to separate the apples. And it goes very, very dark down in there. Does it? I hardly can't even see where this finishes. It's so dark. So I will just clean this a second, just quick clean on the tissue, and take some tail of blue again, and some of that red. And let's go right down here with that dark colour. And go right in there, cut in front of that apple. And it's that forming that shape again. The very same as what we did earlier. And we have very, let's take some black, very dark shadow in here where it's been cast by the pair. So we have a shadow from the pair going in there like that. You can almost not even see it, and that's what I'm trying to achieve. It's almost just kind of disappeared down into that depth. And then I'm going to switch to my big one again. And we have a little bright spot just in the centre, don't we? So let's take some of the white Naples yellow and the cadmium yellow. And just here I'm going to get a little flick up. Now do you want me to zoom in slightly so you can see what I'm doing here much better? Or do you want to see the palette as well? Look, I'll zoom in slightly to show you what I'm doing. Just to give you a good idea. Alright? Now, we have a little piece in the centre there. I'm just going to flick it up, alright? Flick it at opposite ways. Like that, you see? And then clean that. And I'm going to come along then. And I'm going to get some dark colour, so a little black and a little of the crimson. And I'm going to cut in front of this then. So I'm going to create the front of the apple, you see. And again, pull it down. Little curves, little small flicks with the brush. Just like that, nice and gentle. And then you see. You could create some light again on that. I'm going to take some more white and take some of that mauve colour and up on top here um, I'm going to put a little of that just along here. So you can see I'm pulling it down in little curves down into the tip of the apple you see. And then I'm going to do more just here, there's a little light hitting the apple just there, isn't there? And I'll put a little, perhaps a little bit some yellow over here. So we have a little green on the apple as well, creeping through. Although it doesn't look green, um, look, let's make a little green for it. Let's take a touch of blue in that. Soften that away down there, look. I'll put the yellow in there. And I'm going to take some of the black, a little touch of black, and I'm just going to darken it across the front here, look, just to separate 
the front of the apple from the back of the apple. Okay? Look just here and there. And we can soften those now in just a second. First I just want to get some more red. I just want to redden this up very slightly. So I'm just grabbing some cadmium red on the tip of my pointy brush here. And then just pulling it down slightly. And if you want to warm it, take some burnt sienna with some cadmium red. And that will warm the red then ever so slightly. Okay? And I'm going to bring my highlight now again just there. So some Naples yellow, it's a little white, and it's brighten that highlight up. So let's soften that now with the brush, very slightly. Very, very, very gently, look. There. How does that look? We can brighten it as we need to. Look, let's brighten it slightly just there. Let's take some cadmium red, burnt sienna, and I might take a touch of Naples yellow. And we can just brighten it very, very slightly, just along there, look, okay? Now, that'll do fine. So you can soften as much or as little of this as you like. And then come back to it. So completely up to yourself. There. We have two apples. Two apples finished. So let's um, let's start the pear, shall we? I think we should start the pear. And let me see now what brush will I use? Um, I suppose I could use this one. Just give it a quick wipe in the turpentine, quick dip, and give it a, a good clean. Now it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of red still on this. That's absolutely fine. So let's mix mix a nice um, a bright of an orange colour, but I want to put some more green on this as well. So look, I'm just going to take some more cadmium red there because I'm running low. And let's take some cadmium red. Just mix it here. And let's take some cadmium yellow. Then get a nice orangey colour. And some Naples yellow as, uh, as well. Make it nice and creamy. So I'm just going to put this on out first, okay? And I know it looks completely different now to the photograph, but that's fine. I'm going to add some, I'm going to be adding some um, green to this at a later stage. So let's just get that in here like so. Just fill in the general shape of that. Take some more cadmium red, some more yellow, it's a very kind of orangey colour isn't it? So you can just play around with your colours now for this. This is fantastic for practicing different colours and mixes and getting used to um, your palette, as they say. So let's get this right in here now, it's a lovely colour. And I don't know if you can hear my dog outside there, but he's out there playing with a little squeaky toy and the last thing I want now is my dog to be out there playing with a squeaky toy when I'm trying to show you how to paint fruit. Isn't that right? So if he keeps on, I'm going to have to go out there and give out to him. 
we'll see. Now let's just make this a little bit longer there and I'm going to start bringing some kind of yellowy greeny tones into this. So I'm going to take um, cadmium yellow and I'm going to take a touch of lamp black, just a touch. And you can see now how strong that is already. It's a very very strong colour. So let's put a little hint of this now. Little hint on the back side there. And soften it back in then, and you can see how I'm doing my brush strokes now. I'm following the shape of the pair, okay? See? Like so. Soften that in. And let's take more yellow. And let's put more yellow on this side here. And it's slowly but surely coming to life, isn't it? Bit by bit. Now I'm going to take some cadmium red and some burnt sienna. And that's going to give us a nice rich browny kind of a red. A warm red. And I'm going to put that in around this side here. And I'm going to just start darkening one side here. So this is the start now of me darkening one side. Give it a wipe on the cloth, go back in again, burnt sienna, some cadmium red. And let's darken it a bit more. And don't worry now about getting it absolutely perfect, it's just an impression. Alright? It doesn't have to be exactly the same, you know. No. There we go. See, it's warming now as we go. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to show the shape of the pair just here, what kind of turns. All right. So I'm just going to take for that. I'm going to take some cadmium red. With some of that brown and I'm actually going to start stippling now very slightly because you can see on the photographs there's loads of little dots isn't it so I'm going to start stippling very slightly now in a curve here just like that look just to start showing some of the um, the shape of that pair as it comes around now I want to take into this little touch of burnt umber And just down under here, I'm going to start darkening this side. See, I'm just stippling with the brush, that's all I'm doing. And let's get some dark colour for here. Again, following the shape of the pair, see? And let me take some more dark colour, perhaps a touch of black and a touch of red I get some really dark colour down in there look so we're forming the curve of this fruit see so you begin to understand now how all the shapes work And it's kind of, it's pretty much the same principle when you're doing uh, buildings, or buildings with a curve. It's pretty much the same. Now, I'm going to put in some highlights. I'm going to get some highlights going on this. And I'm going to take my smaller brush for that. And I'm going to take some cadmium yellow, and some of that green. And let's take a little white. Nice, bright colour. And I'm going to start going along the front of the pair. Okay. Like so. And I'm going to come along then 
and I'm going to put a little bit up there okay stippling very slightly now with this and it's great practice I'm going to take a little for that side up there a little light catching it there and I'm going to brighten this side here there we go and I'm trying to soften it and I'm just very slightly soften these colours together now I'm going to just add some darker red to this because I'm not happy with that really I'll be honest So I'm just going to darken this right down very, very rich down here. And then I'm going to start brightening it a little. And I don't want colours going muddy either, so I'm being very careful. make a dark purple shadowy colour for that down there. That might look a little better. There we are, and then more red. And then down here like so. So it's all wet into wet techniques, that's what I'm doing. And it does take a bit of practice. You may not get there the very first time, but it will work eventually. Just take your time and just try to enjoy it, try to have a little bit of fun. How's it look? At the end of the day, this is all a bit of fun, isn't it? Now I'm going to put more in the way of highlight just down on the tip of the pear there. I'm going to get some more yellow onto that. So let's go more crisp yellow. There we are, that's better, isn't it? Nice, warm, rich colour. And we get some, perhaps just around the back here as well. And then a hint of green in there, just down underneath here. Just to tell you that there is a hint of green in it. And then I'm going to get some bright highlight on this. Some crisp bright highlights now back to our soft brush let's try to just blend these in very gently and let's take a look at that now Okay, it's not bad. Again, I can come back to it and put details in later. So I just want to take a little bit of black and a little brown. And just where the stalk comes out there, a little circle and let's indicate again some of those little tiny spines coming out. Um, 
I'm going to put some light back up here as well. So I'm just going to start lightening just here and there some spots of the apple. Just while I have the colour in my brush, alright? A little bit just there. And let's take some of that light colour there. No, add a touch of blue to that. No. There. That's coming out a bit better, isn't it? So, um, what I will do actually is look just here and there, put a couple of little dabs, tiny, tiny, tiny dots, just to indicate the um, the skin of the pear. So you know the way the skin has all these little dots in it. So just Add a couple of just here and there, small tiny tiny little dots. And that will help. One more apple left. And then we will do some lovely reflections. So let's let's do this last apple. Now you could go further with this, you could add a banana or you could add a couple of purple grapes. So that would be nice also, wouldn't it? So there's no limit. Now let's take some red and let's take a touch of brown in that. We get a nice rich colour on this side. There we go. Let's take some burnt sienna and some red. That's a nice rich colour. Burnt sienna but red is a lovely colour. It gives it a lovely rich red. Here we go, down like this and then in the pair and back out. Okay. And then let's get some darker colour. So let's take some blue with those reds and get some nice dark down in here. Now you could use just burnt umber for this dark as well if you wanted. But I find a little bit of purple kind of a colour, it just brings us a life that bit more. That's just my opinion. You can use brown if you like, okay? Perfectly fine. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters, okay? It really, really is. Now I want to just give this a quick wash and I'm going to get my other smaller brush again. And let's get some of that bright colour in up here. So it comes in like this, doesn't it? And then it comes out like that. Okay, now clean that because it's all dirty paint on it. Go back in again. And let's pull all of these down towards the centre. Okay, like so. Now we will have a little shadow in there, so let's just put a little hint of a shadow just there like that. And then I'm going to give it a quick clean of my tarps and give it a quick dry. And I'm going to cut in front of that then, you see. So I'm going to get some dark colour for this, so some of that rich pink. And I'm going to cut in front of that, you see. Let's go across like that, and it almost kind of disappears, then doesn't it? Into that colour. No, I'm darkening this again.
let's get some green we have green there as well don't we and put some green on there and we get more again and we have a little bit of green around this side don't we and we have a little bit of green up here See, it's all just about adding little touches of colour. That's all. So I'm going to soften this just slightly first before I go any further, okay? There. And I'm going to take a small brush, my little pointy brush, and I'm going to take some burnt umber. And I'm just going to come around the front of this here with some burnt umber just to give that more form, okay? Go like that, and I'm going to get some highlight. Let's go for this bright yellowy white kind of a color, yes. And let's just put a hint of that just there. And I'm going to put a hint of it again on this one, you see, and some there. And I'm going to put this one in the middle. I'm going to take some of the mauve color and put some of that here and a little bit on these as well look and that mauve colour now will really show off those reds There, isn't that better? And let's soften them right in now. Get this lovely and soft, a nice soft, juicy apple. So I hope you're enjoying this one, everyone. It's, uh, as I said, it's just something different to try every now and again. Um, it is nice to try different things, as I was saying. It's good. I think it's good practice. It's good to get to get your mixing, you know. Now I'm going to lighten some of this here. And I'll do the same with some of this around there. I want to go underneath all of this with some nice dark shadow, okay? So let's take some of that black, some burnt sienna, some of the red, and let's go right in under these with some nice dark shadows, okay? You can see they're almost kind of disappearing into the shadow then, aren't they? And I like that because it creates a little bit of mystery, doesn't it, in the dark. So, keep going with this. All the way along. Now, I'm going to start painting my table, so these are actually sitting on a table, you see, right? So, that means I'm going to paint this all nice and dark now. 
So we'll have some red, some black, little tiny drop of tinners to tin it slightly. And let's get some burnt umber. Just throw lots of different colours into the mix. And the reason why I want this so dark, and it's because I want the red kind of reflections to really show lovely on this. So I'm doing it nice and dark. Okay, look, nice, thick dark paint all the way along. And soften that slightly. Let me have a look. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Next. What I'm going to do is, with this brush, give it a quick clean on the tissue, get most of that paint off. You don't want it too dark. Now I'm just going to put some more of that red on my palette, this crimson red. So, nathol crimson. And I'm going to take some of that with some cadmium red. And I'm going to start pulling that down. Look, a little bit here and there, just flicking it down here and there. Very light flicks. Uh, put a bit here. Already you can start to see coming to life. Now I picked up a bit of yellow there, look, just for the pear. And a little bit there for that. So I'm basically just copying the colours that are above onto the bottom. And then pulling them down. And a little bit of red in there. Quite dark actually, isn't it? And already, you can see we have some wonderful reflections. And this is just so much fun, it really is. Let's try a bit of green, because we have a little bit of green up there too, don't we? Let's take some yellow and a little blue, and let's add a little touch of that here and there. Now we have some very bright colour there as well, don't we? So I'm going to try and get that in. And take a touch of yellow. A little bit of yellow. Touch of white. And let's start here, look. A little bit there. And then we go up around the top like that. I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush, just for now, just to get some of these reflections in a little bit um, crisper. So, I'm getting some more cadmium red there on my palette, and let's take some cadmium red with a little cadmium yellow, and just here under this one, let's create that nice little highlight there, and let's go over here. Uh, let's create a little one from this here as well. That's a bit rich, isn't it? Let's soften that in there just slightly. And we have a nice one here. Let's try some of that. So a little highlight there just for that. And up here we have a little one. So you can see now how it's all kind of coming together. So I'm going to try and get some more of this yellow in here because that's a nice, that's a lovely highlight there, isn't it? Now, um, some yellow and some red. Well, let's go along, up maybe up around the back here, some of it. Okay. So it's easier now to do this with the smaller brush, you see. And now what I'm going to do is, just for now, let me just soften these down very gently. Pulling them straight down. I'm not mixing them too much, because I want to keep that lovely colour. I don't want to lose the lovely colour. 
Now, so how's that looking? Quite nice, isn't it? Now we have a little, um, a little, what would you call it? A little thing coming out of the pair. Let's get that in, shall we? Let's take some yellow, some cadmium yellow with some Naples yellow. And let's just put that in, a little curve around like that. Alright. And it gets wider here, and there's a little bud. Almost like a little bud on the top. Now, that's going to have a little small shadow, isn't it? And then, it's going to have a little shadow on the reflection. You see? Just a little line, that's all I did. Nice and simple. And I might even make it a bit brighter. Just on the upside up here. Okay, like so. We will. We do have a little piece sticking out of the apples as well, actually. Should we put that in? Let's take some black and some brown. And I will put a little one just here. And then I'm going to put a little highlight just on those. Um, let me see now. Let's take some yellow with a little bit of that white. And let's just put a hint of highlight just on those. It's only just a suggestion, that's all. So, I mean, in general now, that's, that's a pretty nice um, painting, isn't it? But you could go along and kind of add little small little highlights and details just here and there so for example i'll give you one example take some red and some blue and i will go down here then with a little bit of white and you could add little touches just to the shadowed areas okay just little tiny bits and that will just give it a little bit more depth i think Okay, perhaps a little touch up here. So, just tiny, tiny bits. And also what we actually have when painting fruit like this, we have um, the different colours reflecting off one another, you see. So because there's yellow now on this here, right, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that edge a little bit more crisp, all right, before I go any further. So what we have is with this yellow might reflect onto that apple there. So I'm going to take a hint of that yellowy orangey colour and put a hint of it just here and there, look. Just a hint. So it's kind of reflecting over onto that apple. I might have some on the back here as well also. Now don't go crazy with this. It's just a little. And I will soften these then in a minute, okay? I will soften them very gently. So, let's soften them in. And how is that looking? Now, the shadow is a bit sharp, isn't it? Let's just soften that back in again. How's that? Is that a little bit better? And so, that's it. The last thing I must do is sign. And it's very important to sign, isn't it? You have to sign. Now you could go along adding little tiny details here and there, as you wish. Adding some lights, some darks. But, just as a tutorial, I think this is just enough to show you, to get you started. 
I'm working with shapes. Now, and I have a frame as well, I want to stick a frame on this. See how this looks? So for example you could lighten some little spots just here and there, look. Only just slightly. I might put a bit more red on that there because that's a little bit bright for my liking. So I'm toning it down very slightly. And let me just fix the edge of it here. There. And, okay, let's move back and put a frame on this baby, shall we? Let me just put that like so, another bit. And I have a frame here, ready to mount. And these are all my own handmade frames. Now look at that. And that is not half bad at all, is it? So there we are. A nice bowl of, or a nice table with some fruit. Some apples and a pear. Isn't that lovely? Now I'm going to zoom in slightly for you. Just to give you a closer look. Because I know you like when I zoom in. So there we are, look. Some very easy techniques. Now that blue in the middle apple there, I will probably tone that down a little because it still looks a bit, looks a little strong, doesn't it? So I might tone that down just a little. But, uh, yeah. That looks quite nice, doesn't it? Now, in fact, I think I will actually tone that down. And so look, as you're zoomed in there, you might as well, you might as well watch me doing it. So I'm just going to soften it back in. Soften it back in gently. And that has helped enormously. So there we go, everyone. And that I would say is a wrap. Now let me just turn this down again. It is quite bright and also the light is killing, is, is hitting the board at a kind of a peculiar angle so it's making it look brighter than it really is. Okay. So um, yes, we we'll leave it at that shall we? I hope you like this. Let me turn the camera around here for you. So there. Yes, you can see me okay, can you? I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, something different, I thought. You might like it. I just let it throw it in there anyway. Um, some nice rich colours and painting shapes. You know, getting lights and darks on shapes. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you for all your help and support. Um, if you want to send me some suggestions or some work um, some of your work to show you how you're getting on send it to me at stephenconway12 gmail.com and um, I'd be delighted to see how you're doing and even this one I'd love to see how you're getting on with this if you're following me along with this tutorial so please please do send them to me I'd love to see what you're doing all right so until the next time uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me this is easy oil painting and I try to keep it as easy as I can so um, let me know how, how you're doing. Thank you very much and God bless. I will see you again very soon.